We're going to be looking at some sandstones and we're here now on Sydney Harbour and in particular the places we're going to be looking at are Hickson Road in the rocks and also the sandstones just near the Sydney Botanic Gardens at Mrs Macquarie's Point. But you can see sandstones in loads of places around Sydney. Actually, sandstone is the most common rock that you're going to find sticking out of the ground anywhere in Sydney. Sandstones make up all of the cliffs along the coast and then you can see them all the way through to the rocks that make up the Blue Mountains. And actually a lot of the rocks that people use to build buildings and walls are also sandstone. And that's true not only in Sydney, but in every city around Australia. So wherever you are, you should be able to find some sandstone. So when you're at home or around your school, why don't you have a look around and see if you can find some pieces of sandstone. Where would you expect to see sand? At the beach, right? Well, this rock is called sandstone. It's a rock that's made of sand. If you look really closely at this rock, it looks like thousands and thousands of tiny grains of sand all stuck together. So, how does this sandstone form? Well, just like normal sand, the grains of sand in this sandstone were first deposited near the coast. When water's moving, it picks up pieces of sand. And then when it's calm, the sand drops out in flat layers. In this rock, you can see these flat layers where the sand has dropped out of the water, just like in our jar. But you might be thinking, hang on, sand's soft. It runs through my fingers. It's not hard like a rock. And you'd be right. What happens is that as more and more sand gets deposited in layers, the bottom layers get pushed down deep into the earth and then the sand grains get stuck together to become strong like a rock. One of the amazing things about this rock is that the sand came all the way from Antarctica. It was dropped out way back in the time of the dinosaurs. So when you look at a piece of rock like this in Sydney, you can imagine dinosaurs walking on beaches and you can know that you're looking at a piece of Antarctica. So just like the sand in our jar, that when it drops out of the water, it's flat on top, we can see lots of flat lines in this rock where the sand has dropped out in flat layers. But if you look more closely at this rock, are all the lines flat? Can you see any diagonal lines in this rock? Do you have any ideas on why the sand would make these diagonal lines? It might help us solve this mystery if we think about what we see at the beach. Pretend you're at the beach and you're walking along the sand close to the water where the, where the sand's wet or even you're swimming in the water where it's really shallow. Is the sand completely flat underneath your feet? Sometimes it is, but sometimes there are ripples in the water. If you think about those ripples, the edges of those ripples are diagonal lines. And what we're seeing here in, those, in these diagonal lines is the edges of those ripples. As more and more ripples built up over time, then these diagonal lines are their edges. Sometimes a big storm comes along and there's big waves that wash off the top of those ripples and make them flat. And so we can see that here with this flat line that's cut off the top of those diagonal lines. Rock detective geologists can look at diagonal lines and flat lines like this to figure out how the water was flowing and where there were big storm events. Can you figure out, looking at these rocks, where there were storms?
We're now looking at some more sandstone. We're just next to the Sydney Botanic Gardens at Mrs Macquarie's Point. And this sandstone has formed a cave. So why do you think a strong rock like sandstone would form a cave? Well, over time, wind and water can wear away at a rock and over thousands of years make a cave like this. And that's called erosion. Here in this rock, although the sandstone's really strong, in here, there's a thin layer of softer rock that's made of mud. And that was a layer where the wind and the water could get into more easily and start to wear away this cave. People can wear away rocks too. Look down here. Here are some stairs that people carved into the rock. And over many, many years, as people have walked up and down these stairs, the stairs have worn away in the middle. If you try rubbing a harder rock with a softer rock, like this piece of granite is really hard, it's what we use to make kitchen bench tops. If you rub the sandstone with it, then you would see that the harder rock can scratch the softer rock. In lots of places around Sydney Harbour, you can see places where indigenous people scratched pictures into softer rock using harder rock. This rock engraving is from Berry Island, right on Sydney Harbour. And you can see where the indigenous people have scratched the picture of the animal into the sandstone so that it would stay there for hundreds and hundreds of years. You can also see the grooves where the indigenous people sharpened axes against the sandstone and the softer sandstone gradually wore away. As well as the big cave, this sandstone also has these tiny little caves. This is called honeycomb weathering. And it's called that because it looks like the honeycomb that bees would make. And this forms when seawater gets onto the rock and the salt get, gets into the rock and makes tiny little cracks. And those cracks make it easier for the wind and the water to get in there and erode the rock away and form these tiny little caves. Rock with honeycomb weathering like this, when it's under the water, it's a great habitat for fish and seaweed and shellfish to live in. The next time you're in the Botanic Gardens, see if you can see other pieces of sandstone that have caves and also this fantastic honeycomb weathering. Just like sand grains on a beach, the sand grains in sandstone can be made up of lots of different types of minerals. Most of the grains in the Sydney sandstone are made of a common light coloured mineral called quartz. Actually quartz was one of the minerals that we could see in the granites in the pillars of the Sydney Harbour Bridge. When mountains and hills that are made of granite slowly get worn away and erode over time, some of that quartz will get washed away in rivers and end up deposited near beaches. We can do some detective work to figure out where the quartz grains in our sandstone came from. If we look at the sandstone under a microscope, we see that some of the grains are really round. So we know they were carried in water for a long time, getting bounced around in the river and becoming more and more smooth. The quartz grains in this sandstone that came from Antarctica have really round, smooth edges. But some of the other quartz grains have sharp, pointy edges. So we know that they came from somewhere closer to Sydney and didn't have as much time to get rounded and smoothed in a river. We can also use other minerals to figure out where the sand came from. This sandstone also contains a mineral called zircon. And zircon allows us to be forensic detectives because with zircon we can date the age when the mineral was formed. So geologists dated the age of the zircon minerals in this sandstone and found a match to the age of mountains in Antarctica. And that's how we know that the sand grains in this sandstone started out as a mountain all the way in Antarctica, got eroded away and washed down rivers all the way to Sydney and ended up as this sandstone.